Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's session on uh, accounting as a profession with our guests from BDO. Just a few little housekeeping things while everybody is uh, joining us. We'd like to point out that as you may or may not have been on these sessions, we have our chat box on the right of your screen. If you turn that on and ask questions throughout the presentation, that will be happening shortly. We'll be gathering up all your questions for a live Q&A at the end with our guests. We often get asked about this session if your friends or colleagues are unable to join us. This session is being recorded and will be available on CareerMap, www.careermap.co.uk forward slash CareerMap Live. There's a whole host of videos there for you to watch, but we're looking forward to an exciting session today. Um, I'd like to invite our, uh, sorry, invite, they're already here. I'd like to introduce our guests. <laughs> We've got Gemma and Aisha here who will be talking through the presentation. So um, I'll see you later at the Q&A. Don't forget to add your questions and over to you guys. Thank you, Sharon. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Aisha um, Ola Saeed. I'm the assistant manager within the Early in Careers team at BDO. Um, and we're joined by Gemma, who is one of um, our BDO trainees. Um, she will be introducing herself properly um, as we go through the presentation and be talking about her journey um, to join a BDO and what life is like as a trainee at BDO, especially in the area that she works in. Um, so today's presentation will cover a few topics and if there are any questions at any point please do feel free to um, drop them in the chat section and we will pick them up as we go along. Um, what we'll cover today um, will include talking about BDO, so who we are and what we do and a bit about our culture and how um, being yourself is really important to us at the firm. We'll then talk about some myths about accounting careers. Um, we know that um, a lot of young people and a lot of students may have um, ideas about what a, an accounting career would include or um, would um, pertain to and we um, think it's really important to help broaden their horizons and really lift the lid on accounting to really help show the varied careers available um, within the profession. We'll then talk specifically about BDO, so um, the streams of work we cover, um, the programmes that we offer um, and the recruitment process for those. Um, like I said, um, you'll get the opportunity to hear more from um, Gemma, she talks about her experience. But we'll also talk about what apprenticeships look like at BDO as well, understanding that that may be really relevant for this audience as well. I had a couple of poll questions that I wanted us to um, get started with. So if I could get some help with um, bringing those into the poll section, that would be amazing. And I thought it would be a good way to kind of gauge where um, people are at in terms of their understanding of BDO um, and the work that we do, but also recognising that we are currently in the middle of a global pandemic um, and there are interesting and innovative ways that people are taking to um, learn more about the careers available to them and their students, one of them obviously being this career map event today. I can't see those poll questions come through. So, oh, brilliant, perfect. Um, so the first one here is, um, how much did you know about BDO before today's presentation? So I know I'm um, being a bit unfair here by asking you the question before we start, but it does actually help understand um, how much you may know about us. Okay, perfect. So. We've got quite a few answers in the not at all and quite a few answers in the a little. Um, so that's good because it means that everything I'm going to hopefully say today will be interesting to you all and it will be all it will be new information um, that you will benefit from. Perfect. And then the second question. I'll wait for that to come through. Um, it's just to find out about um, people's experiences um, in this pandemic of finding information relating to careers and whether that's been made easier or harder um, 
via because of the virtual opportunities that have been um, afforded to us in this current environment. Perfect. So that question should come through now um, in the polls. Um, and the question is, has it been harder or easier to find out um, about work experience, apprenticeships and other career opportunities since the pandemic? Any options there are either easier, neither easier, um, neither easier or harder and harder. OK, so it seems like we um, have a bit of a lead for it being harder. Um, and that's really helpful to understand as well. Um, um, BDO specifically have made a lot of efforts like hosting events like this to really engage people and hopefully democratise how people access information about careers. But if you do have any questions today, please feel free to drop them in the chat section and we'll definitely get to them. OK, so let's get started. Um, so just a bit about BDO. So we're part of a um, $9.6 billion um, grossing organisation. Um, we're in 160, um, 67 countries and have about 1,800 offices with about 88,000 um, people. Now, it, it, it means we're a global organisation and it means that we um, have the breadth and kind of scale um, to really service the different types of clients that we work with. Um, we have um, about 500 and um, 5,500 people in the UK business. I think that's about 6,000 now actually, who um, are focused on helping our clients and their colleagues succeed. Um, you can see some more information there about um, uh, us and in that little diagram of the UK, you can see the different offices we have across the UK. So there's really national co um, coverage there. And 97% of our clients would recommend us. So we do believe in our strong relationship with our, um, our clients. So just to touch on um, who these clients are. Um, so as an accounting, accounting firm and a professional services firm, we w work with an array of, um, array of clients across um, different industries, offering a range of services. Now, I won't go into the details of those services right now because I've got, um, hopefully, um, a helpful description of our key, kind of core areas of focus um, further on in the slides. But hopefully what you can um, see from that mix of logos there is that we work with um, a lot of the consumer brands that we may all be familiar with and then some that might not be um, part of your everyday and it really does speak to the breadth of opportunity available so you can see there you've got kind of BFI, um, Kurt Geiger, so fashion brands to cultural institutions to um, global charities and um, um, organisations, um, development organisations to um, banks as well so there's a real range of exposure that our people get um, in terms of the work that they um, deliver. So a bit about our culture. So as a big organisation, it's really important to us to create as many spaces as, po um, as possible for our people to be themselves and for them to seek and find like minded individuals that share common ground and help them on their journey um, with us at BDO. We have a number of employee networks, including the BAME network, BDO Inspire, which is a, um, our women's network, um, the Islamic network, Jewish um, community, Blend, which is our LGBTQ um, network and many others as well and the really important thing for us is um, this isn't just for people who would identify as being part of these groups but also for allies so people who may not be part of the group but um, seek to understand and to partner with um, their peers and, and grow in that mutual understanding and networking and community. And um, health and well-being is really important to us, not just that of our employees. And as you can imagine, it's, it's very important in this time as we're all working from home. But also for us, it's really important to contribute back um, to society as much as possible. So we have something called um, my five action days plus my five strategic days, which are essentially 10 days in total that our people are allowed to use um, paid 
to support um, a charity organization or a cause that they are passionate about. And it's been important to us to maintain that throughout um, the time um, that we've been in um, working from home as well. So creating as many kind of virtual opportunities to support and volunteer as possible. So just to talk about accounting myths and please do let me know if I'm breezing through these. Um, I'm, I want to leave as much time as possible for questions at the end. But um, looking at this kind of spider diagram, it, you, can, um, you can describe it as that. Um, there will be a lot of phrases or comments here that you may have heard from your peers or students um, that you support. And um, it's just interesting to kind of, as someone who supports a lot of the um, accountants in our business and having one of our um, people from the business here today to um, see that this is so different from the life of um, many of our people at BDO. So, you know, you've got, um, I guess, more positive ones as as um, as like the um, maths genius one here. But then you have ones around kind of, you need, it's for introverts or people with dull personality types. I can definitely tell you that's not the case. Um, and, you know, there's limit, there's a limit to the kind of purpose and impact you can drive. So what I wanted to do was just take these one by one and kind of give a bit of a I guess, shed some light on on what it's actually like to work in this profession. So from taking the first one, is accounting boring? Is professional services boring? Well, it's important to say that there are so many different accounting roles within the industry. Um, accountants work with businesses in every industry and, you know, we kind of saw some of the names that are current clients of um, BDO, but you can work with clients and businesses in the entertainment space to public services. Um, there's even room to work in areas aligned to any of your interests. So um, there's a particular area of our business that works with um, high net worth individuals. And you can imagine within that you, you would have kind of celebrities, um, people who are kind of juggernauts in, in business. So there's a real opportunity to work with people that you may actually have aspired to meet at some point in life as well. Do you have to be a math genius? My answer to that would be no. Um, being an accountant is much more about problem solving than doing any kind of complicated mathematics. Um, the role is about analysing and investigating and having a keen eye um, for detail. And those are skills that, you know, you can have across the board. We have people that have joined our business with history degrees or have come, um, have joined us with A-levels in kind of more social sciences um, and the creative arts as well. So accounting accountants really do need to know more about rules and regulations and financial law more than mathematics. It's about understanding the policies and rules of the game and making sure that you support our clients to adhere to them. Is it for introvert, introverted and dull people? Well, um, like I said before, I can definitely attest to that not being the case. Um, accountants are our trusted advisors of our clients. They have to ha be really great communicators and be really strong relationship builders in order to get the respect and trust of the clients that we work with. Um, if you think about the fact that we are working with clients who um, are definitely of high net worth businesses that are you know, operate in the millions, um, you really do need to have the kind of personality to bring your clients on side and to build a, the sort of relationship that leads to um, the lasting working relationships. Is there a lot of desk work and number, crunch, and number crunching? Well, accountants do more um, than bookkeeping. And to be honest, there's a lot less of kind of what you would traditionally call, you know, opening big old ledgers and kind of double checking where the 50 pound has gone um, and a lot of a lot of it now is about advising and that has a lot to do with technology um, on any given day they may you, you might find our accountants attending client meetings producing financial reports working on projects or partaking in discussions to improve the overall um, business of our clients uh, technology has done an amazing job at um, creating more opportunities for um, our people to use more of their kind of core competencies, their, their skills, their interpersonal skills and their advisory capabilities to support our clients. 
no impactful um, no purposeful or impactful work well many of our accountants work um, in areas for example like um, forensic accounting where they use their skills to prevent financial crime and at BDO we have an area of the business called IIDA um, and that team uses their expertise to help audit international charities so if you think of kind of your Oxfams your um, UNICEFs um, they work with those charities to ensure that they don't the, um, the donations of people like you and I are effectively used to um, progress the mission of those charities and reach those people that need it on the ground. Is the, um, in, is the industry or the profession threatened by technology? I'd say the opposite is the case. Technological um, advancements have really been welcomed in the industry. Um, it's helped that automating certain processes has allowed um, accountants to become more advisors and consultants to businesses. So that's um, covering, that's just covering the um, kind of accounting myths. So now talking about BDO, um, I've kind of alluded to this previously, but there are just so many different um, roles within professional services and accounting. And at BDO, they kind of roughly split into four areas. You have tax, audit and assurance, advisory and business services and outsourcing. So looking at tax, first of all, and these are kind of just headline summaries. If um, any of our tax people were on this um, call and on, on this meeting today, they might um, push back and kind of give us more detail about what they do. Um, but there's so much nuance across all those areas in that spider, spider diagram that make up the different substreams within tax. But kind of giving an overarching description. Our tax advisors guarantee a personal service and what they do is deliver accurate and authoritative advice and guidance um, on all tax related matters to our clients and helping them to solve tax issues, tax issues in a quick and efficient way. It's a big area of our business, about a thousand people in our UK um, operations and um, working within tax and we have about a hundred partners in this space as well. And within that, you can see there's a real mix there. You have tax relating to kind of real estate and construction, international tax, human capital tax, and then prior client services taxes, what I was talking about in terms of um, people in our business that work with high net um, individuals and help them do their kind of tax management. Then you have audit and assurance. So audit is essentially checking the financial statements are accurate for the businesses that, and clients that we support and present and ensuring that they're presented fairly in all um, material aspects. So ensuring that they comply with the applicable reporting standards. This is the biggest area of our business. We have over 2000 people working in that space with about 122 partners. And again, looking at that spider diagram, what you can see there is that there's a real um, room for specialism in there. So you have your not for profit um, audit working with not for profit organisations. And then you have your um, public sector assurance as well, working with public sector organisations as well. So there's a real mix in there. Next, we look at advisory. So advisory is working with clients to build the vision and navigate the course and understand where they are today. So, it, you know, it's all in the name where they're as trusted advisors to our clients. We have about 1,600 um, people who work in that space in the UK with 105 partners. And across advisory, there are different areas. You have business restructuring, which essentially looks at when businesses are stru um, struggling or they're about, about to be wound down or um, put into administration. There's a lot of interesting work that goes into that section that looks at um, um, things like um, the potential of being able to sell the business somewhere else or how do you how do you make sure that we're covering the um, debts owed to creditors and um, how are we protecting the employees of um, that um, that business that may be going under. So there's so much interesting work in this space and that's just an example of one area um, that sits within advisory. And then you have business services and outsourcing. So that is a specific area to BDO that combines the use of technology, like I was saying before, and the expertise of our team and our wider ecosystem. And what we essentially do there is provide an outsourced 
accounting and tax service to um, our clients, especially those who are growing businesses. And what essentially that could look like, and just again simplifying this down, is um, you may have a growing business that does not necessarily have the internal financial um, structures or people or resource in place in order to support them with all the kind of financial um, needs that they have and outsourcing that function and working with partnership with, B in, um, with BDO and our people means that we're able to help them with that as they scale and grow and build that um, capability potentially in-house or stay with us for the longer term. So I'm just going to quickly talk about um, our programs that are specifically targeted at those that are currently in school. Um, and then I'll hand over to Gemma, who will tell us a bit about her experience of being um, a trainee who came through one of these programs. Now, I know this text might be quite small, but um, I'll try and kind of read out some um, most of it. So when we look at programs that are aimed at those who have not um, completed a university degree, you have our school leaver program, which is essentially the program for those who have finished their A-levels or equivalent and want to join us um, as um, trainees. So essentially join us on a full-time employment basis. Um, it's a four-year program. In that time, they'll become um, qualified professional um, accountants, um, and that and the the different qualifications they um, will complete are go globally recognised. It's designed for individuals who want to pursue a career um, with us at BDO and study for a professional qualification, like I said earlier. Um, we have minimum requirements around that, so at least three A-levels or an equivalent at grades A star to C, um, and then also a nine or, um, between a nine and four in maths and English GCSE. We then have our Year 12 Virtual Insight Week, and this is um, a programme we're running this year specifically because of the global pandemic. Essentially, what we're doing is using it as a replacement for our summer school, which is usually an in-the-office programme. But this year, we're using it as an opportunity to run an Insight Week, which will be virtual. The programme's aimed at Year 12 students and provides the ideal opportunity to learn more about the accounting profession. And at the end of the, of the program, those that complete the week um, could then be offered the opportunity to join us on a school leaver on our school leaver program as, as um, in apprenticeship roles with us when once they finish their A levels. And then finally, I wanted to talk about our Explore BDO Virtual Insight Week. So this is open to um, students between year 10 and year 12. And the aim of this programme, again, is a virtual one week programme, but this has a really specific focus around helping P um, students understand the opportunities available within accounting. So, yes, you know, we're running it specifically about BDO, but the aim here is to give people um, a broader um, um, understanding of the careers available to them within this space and help them make a, an informed decision about if it's for them. Um, most importantly for us is the fact that we are really committed, very much so committed to increasing social mobility. So we are aiming this programme at year 10 to year 12 um, state school students who are either who either have been um, eligible for free school meals or would be the first in their family to go to university. And those who are successful on this program um, are, are able to get the opportunity to be fast tracked onto our summer school, which is the virtual insight week that I've talked about previously, which then leads um, could lead on to a, a permanent role with us. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to hear from Gemma Youngman, who's going to talk about her journey to BTO and, and the role that she does with us. Gemma. Hi guys, so just a little bit of an introduction about me. Um, I'm Gemma Youngman and I started um, in the Birmingham office in September 2019, so about 18 months ago now. Um, so still relatively new to the role, still finding my feet. Um, we've kind of touched on the different types of audit work and I specialise with not-for-profit clients. Um, so I've got a couple of examples below. Um, I'm working on the NHS, I've worked on the University of Lincoln, Warwick, Blenheim Palace. Um, and these are just a couple I could have gone on and on um, you'll notice River Islands on there as well and while that's not a not-for-profit client um, you definitely do get the opportunity to work on lots of different types of clients um, so moving on to the timeline of how I got to where I am now um, in July 2017 I did the BDO summer school program 
So as we've just spoken about, we've now got the virtual insight week, um, which is kind of very similar to what I did. Um, so I worked, I actually did that in the London office because I didn't realise I could do it in Birmingham. Um, but I worked on um, consumer markets clients. So working with, I think I did work on like Christian Louboutins and Hotel Chocolat. And I really enjoyed the, the two weeks that I did there. Um, from those two weeks, I got an offer to start my apprenticeship at BDO. Um, it came around to my A-level results day. I got results that I was really happy with. And it kind of got to that point where I thought, hang on, do I want to be going to university or do I want to do an apprenticeship? Um, you'll see below that I did actually decide to go to Durham University. Um, I started at Durham to study accounting and finance. Um, I don't want you to hear that and think, oh gosh, I've got to study something like accounting to be able to get into accounting. It's not that way at all. Um, I just knew that I did an A-level in accounting and I just knew that I enjoyed the subject. So for me, it was definitely more subject based. I knew I liked that and that's why I chose it. It wasn't at all thinking if I want to do accounting, I need to be doing that subject. Um, the people I work with now, some have got degrees in chemistry, biological sciences, um, all sorts of different things. So honestly, don't think about your A-level um, subjects in that they, they don't narrow down the path that you have to go down. You can do absolutely any subject, do the subject you enjoy that you're good at um, and don't worry about kind of the long-term impact of that. Um, so as it says there in October, 2018, I started at Durham University. Um, I think I went in the end just because I was so torn between the two, but I just, I didn't feel like I was ready to start a job. Um, April 2019 came around and I just wasn't enjoying the course. It was very theoretical. Um, so I was learning about the history of the financial markets and that, that just wasn't what I enjoyed doing. I'm a much more practical person. I am a, a very extroverted person um, and studying again just wasn't for me. Um, so I decided to think about what other options I had and remembered about the offer I got at BDO. Um, so I applied to work at BDO again um, and in June 2019, I interviewed for and got an offer at BDO. Um, came around to September 2019 and I started working for BDO. Um, and that's what I've been doing now for the last 18 months. And it's something I've really enjoyed. It's something I'm really glad I did change from university because while that was good fun, I had a great year. Um, but the social aspect of university is definitely good fun. I, I can't deny that at all. Um, but for me, I knew that I just wanted to get in a, straight into a job. Um, I wanted I wanted the stuff that I was doing to be a bit more meaningful. Whereas at university, I felt like I was lying around. I might have had one lecture a day, two lectures a day. Whereas I knew I needed something a lot more structured. So working kind of your standard nine to five hours is something that worked for me. Um, so yeah, that's a very brief kind of introduction into me. Um, I know you'll have a lot of questions coming out of that and stuff. So if you just want to drop any in the chat box and we can come back to them in a bit. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gemma. Um, I put, I think there's another poll question. I just thought it would be interesting that given we've talked about the different areas um, of accounting to get a kind of a bit of a sense of um, what area sounds most interesting to um, the people on the call today. Um, there's no <laughs> right or wrong answer, um, but I think that poll will be coming through. Yeah, that's just come through. So which of the streams sounds the most interesting to you? So you've got tax, business services and outsourcing, advisory, audit and assurance. Great, we've got those responses coming through. looks like advisory is just niggling ahead there um followed closely at the heels by business um services and outsourcing and and tax and then we've got assurance as well amazing brilliant okay so let's look at our application process and i'll breeze through this because a lot of this information is on our website and we've got a really great video on our website that kind of gives you the hints and tips on how to put um put kind of your best foot for, um, forward in our application process. The way we run our application process is using a blended assessment. And all that means is just a fancy way of saying that we assess candidates based off the strengths that we can see that they have 
but also what we believe their future performance will be. So we're always looking for potential, not experience. And this is across all of early in careers. You do not have to have worked in accounting, done a summer internship in an accountancy firm or professional services firm to apply to us. We do not look at that as part of our process. What we do look at, though, is the strengths that you bring to the table. What are you naturally good at? What are you passionate about? But then also your future performance. And it's, it would um, be wrong of me not to mention achieving my potential, which is our firm wide framework. We use it to assess candidates based off our core competencies and values. Those also can be seen on our website. So if you're interested in finding out more about what the BDO person um, looks like, have a look at the AMP framework on our website and especially at the core competencies. So I've pulled out some of the core ones that we assess for um, here. So you've got business thinking, focusing on our clients, being commercially aware, understanding kind of how business works so that you are able to um, provide that kind of best in class service to our, um, to our clients. Being an effective communicator, Gemma's talked about her bubbly personality and how that um, holds her in good stead in her role collaborating there's a lot of working with your colleagues a lot of working with different organizations um, and the client um, themselves that comes into accounting um, and does require really strong collaborators innovation and change looking for ways to solve problems and to innovate how to lead to effective um, and better solutions for um, the clients that we serve And now we get this question a lot, what does our application process look like? So our application process is really streamlined now. Um, there's an online application form which we use to assess your eligibility. So do you have the required grades? Do you have the right to work in the UK? Then um, we have our online testing stage and our video interview. Now this is a called um, this is called a hypo eye. This is actually a 45 minute test and for those who may have taken online tests um, elsewhere before, it, it's, it basically brings together the different elements of the different tests that you may have experienced before. So it tests your verbal intellect, your ability to kind of read information, digest it and um, come up with um, a suitable response. It tests your numerical intellect, so your ability to work with simplified numbers. And when I, I and when I say simplified, I do mean simplified. You're talking about um, percentages, ratios, that kind of thing. Quite simple, like you know, GCSE level um, maths. And then it looks at behaviour. So do you exhibit this, the behaviours that we want from our people? And then again, this aligns back to the AMP framework that I just went through, the Achieving My Potential framework I just went through. Do you exhibit the behaviours? Do you uh, make decisions based off those competencies that we want to see in our people? And then in within that same 45 minutes, there's the opportunity to complete a virtual um, a video interview where you are asked four questions um, you then record your response to camera and you have two minutes to um, um, to respond um, you are not timed this test isn't timed so we're not looking for the person to finish it quickest we're just looking for accurate responses so do take your time you can take your time between the questions to think about what you want your answer to be and then you can record your video interview and then the final stage is um, a half a day assessment centre. Now, obviously, because of um, the current situation, all our assessment centres are virtual. And then if you are successful at the virtual assessment centre, you are made an offer. So there's three stages in our process. So I just wanted to touch a bit on the online test because, again, I know that that's an area of focus where people may not have come across that before. I think everybody, potentially, if you've ever done a job before, might um, have had to interview for your um, kind of retail job or interview for the job where you work at the supermarket. Um, so there'll be a lot of kind of um, common ground around understanding what the assessment centre is like. There's an interview, there's group exercises. But I wanted to talk about the online test because it's not something that you will come across, you may have come across in your kind of day-to-day -day life. So to give yourself the best chance of succeeding, do sit in a quiet room where you won't be disturbed. Um, 
have everything you might need with you, a calculator, pen, paper. Um, again, I talked about those kind of simple maths that are involved in the assessment. If you have a calculator, you know how to work out your ratios and your percentages. It does hold you in good stead. Practice. Use the practice test that we have available and that we've provided on our, um, on our te online testing platform. And then in the video interview, dress as you would for a normal interview. Yes, you're in your own home, but you are being recorded. We don't judge you on what you're wearing, but we do find, and there's a lot of research out there that talks about the fact that if you dress like you're going to work, you tend to present a lot better in, in front of a camera. And that's probably why, why I've got my white shirt out today as well. <laughs> Um, believe in yourself, keep any notes far away. Um, you don't want to kind of read off your notes when you're um, giving your answers to those video interviews. You might have just specific points or one, one, one word trigger points that help you remember what you want to say, but definitely don't read off notes. It does come across in um, the um, video and it can affect your score. And then keep an eye on the time, not because this is a timed assessment, but because you do have two minutes for essentially recording your response. So two minutes of speaking time for each of the questions that you're answering. So just a quick bit on the virtual assessment centre. So there are five elements as part of this. Um, one of them you're not being assessed on. So there's a welcome and intro where, you know, you get to meet the team, you get to meet the EIC team and the assessors for the day, and you also get to meet the other candidates um, virtually. And then we have a group exercise where you work with um, the other candidates being assessed to answer a brief. And there we're looking for all the things you can think about in terms of collaboration, communication skills, that kind of thing. You then have an individual presentation where you're given a brief and you have to create a presentation and do a SWOT analysis as part of that. Then you have your interview. Now, this interview is um, with a partner or director where you get asked um, questions that test you on those core competencies and strengths that we talked about earlier. And there's a short written exercise as well. So I'm just going to now change gears a bit and talk about um, an apprenticeship. I've seen that there are quite a few questions about an apprenticeship in, about the apprenticeship in general, sorry, in the um, chat section. So I'm just going to cover this. So at, at BDO, an apprenticeship is essentially, I guess the easiest way to think about it is the opportunity to gain real, real world, real life work experience um, that you're paid to do full time, whilst also gaining and studying for the professional qualifications that make you a fully fledged accountant. The amazing thing about an apprenticeship is that you are developing skills, experience and behaviours at the same time. Right. So how it differs to going to university is that you're actually in a job. An apprenticeship is a job that includes training. OK, if you pass all your exams um, and those exams are the um, in this case, I'm talking about the exams you, you take to become an accountant. Um, you then become a qualified accountant at the end of your apprenticeship. OK. An apprenticeship kind of results in two qualification and an apprenticeship results in two qualifications being gained at the end of the apprenticeship. It's so like I talked about a professional qualification, which makes you a qualified chart, um, um, qualified accountant and then the apprenticeship itself and the apprentice our apprentices are required to complete learning 20 percent of the time so imagine you're working four days a week on client work in the office with your peers you then have 20 percent of your time so one day a week that you spend either um intuition or studying or you know reading up on um on um the next exam that you've got as part of your development you will get access to mentoring and support from our professional qualifications team who are there to support you with your development. When we um, employ people onto our apprenticeship, it is in our best interest to make sure that you are supported as much as possible to complete your apprenticeship, succeed in your exams and become a qualified um, accountant. Most of our apprenticeship programmes are at a level seven and that's equivalent to a master's level qualification. So we're talking about in four years, working full time, getting paid for that, but also at the end of those four years, having the equivalent of a master's 
um, and being a, a, a qualified accountant as well. Misconceptions about apprenticeships. I'm just going to rattle these off and I imagine we'll get to them as well in the questions. Um, I'm a graduate. I don't need an apprenticeship. And this is in here because all our university graduates that join us also have to do the same apprenticeship as the um, students that join us after they finish their A-levels. And I think there's kind of, it gets a bit mixed up where people don't actually realise that's the case. But because again, we're talking about master's level qualification. If if somebody went to university for three years and joined us, um, in, let's say this September, and at the same time, someone who had just finished their A-levels joined us as a school leaver in September, they would both complete the same qualifications in order to become chartered accountants. The only difference is that the university student would have done their three years at university, joined us and done, and then had to do three years of study to become a, a qualified accountant and finish their apprenticeship. Whereas the A-level student would have joined us after A-levels and only then had to do four years with us to complete that same qualification. So there's only an additional year that the, print, that the school leaver uses to kind of make up um, that kind of additional bit of learning. Um, but apart from that, you're on par with a graduate that joins us. Hope I've kind of explained that as clearly as possible. Um, apprenticeships are non-academic. Um, there's other ones here around, I have a chance of finding employment in the future if I go to university. I'm too old to be an apprentice. There's no age restrictions on um, being part of our apprenticeship. The apprenticeship itself is a job. It's just that you're trained on the job um, rather than it being training that, that might get you a job. It's actually a job with training attached. And that's the best way to look at it. Um, I will not get paid for an apprenticeship. All our apprentices that get paid, get paid. Like I said, people that graduate from university and join us are on the same apprenticeship as someone who leaves their A-levels or finishes A-levels and joins us. So that's the end of the presentation. If you want to find out more about us, you can either go to um, our Early in Careers website, and that's BDO um, Early in Career, or you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. You can also email um, the early in career at bdo.co.uk inbox if you have any questions. Um, but I think we've got quite a bit of time now for questions, hopefully. So, um, Sharon, I think, are you helping us with navigating those? I am indeed. I Perfect. am indeed. Uh, yes, we had quite a lot of chatter going on there. Um, and I will be looking at my notes. So uh, because I had to write down uh, quite so many that we had in here. Um, I think I'll kind of go back. Uh, it's sort of you did mention towards the end about the technicalities. I thought we'd start with the technicalities of the present uh, that have come out kind of questions. And also, um, but the very first thing I'd like to start with is um, a group of questions that were around what's the best thing about working at BDO. Um, is it easy to meet people? Um, and I'm assuming that questions around, we all know where they talk about the university experience, uh, you know, how is that different? And um, do you ever feel unqualified? Um, although I think you answered that very nicely at the end, um, but if you don't have a degree, but of course you have other qualifications. So I'll hand that over to you. Um, Gemma, do you want to talk about um, take some of those questions because I think you've got a really interesting perspective as someone um, in our business. Yeah, perfect. If I start then with the do I ever feel unqualified, 100% yes I, I do, but that's not because I'm a school leaver and not a graduate, that, that doesn't really impact on it. When a graduate starts, um, they're in the exact same position. They've never worked a job in accounting or at least most of them haven't. Um, so we're in the same boat. No one knows what's going on to start with. Um, but every day is a learning day. Um, so I definitely wouldn't worry about going into a job and thinking that you know less than a graduate because you're going to learn it as well. And everyone at work knows that you're in that position. Um, a lot of the managers, partners, directors, they've been through the exact same um, process. So um, they know exactly what you're going through and they'll definitely support and coach you through that. Um, I think another one of those questions was kind of why BDO, what's different? Um, you'll find within accounting, kind of every firm offer you pretty much the same qualification, if I'm completely honest. Um, so when you're looking at a firm, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't overly look into the qualifications and like the differences between them, although that's something to consider. I think the main thing you need to be looking at is kind of the culture of the firm. Do you fit in? Do you like the way that they are? When I did um, my assessment centre, I just found everyone so approachable. I found them really genuine people and they genuinely wanted to help me answer my questions and they wanted to, to check that they were a good fit for me as much as if I was a good fit for them. Um, so yeah, definitely something to keep in mind when you think of applying for, for jobs is, do you actually enjoy the idea of that firm itself? Um, and I can't remember the other questions. <laughs> uh, is it easy to meet people? Yeah, so when I started, um, my intake within Birmingham was an intake of about 20 people. So that was probably split as about eight school leavers and 12 graduates and um, so straight away you've already made your own little friendship group so they're the people that are going to be going through the qualification with me they're my first point of contact when I've got a question um, so definitely easy to meet people and then so I work in the audit team and probably every two to six weeks we rotate what client we're working on so when you're working on a client you might be in a team from two people to a team of 10 people so that's a really great way. You meet a different group of people every couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, there's always a chance to meet new people. And I don't think that by going for the school leaver route rather than university, you miss out on meeting people. You just meet them in a very different way. Brilliant. It's interesting that you mentioned about location in Birmingham because we did have a couple of questions about obviously with the current COVID uh, situation um, and we've had questions asked in previous uh, presentations as well about uh, where they work and where they would be uh, live, sorry, and where they might be expected to work, but also with the impact of COVID uh, with remote learning, with virtual working. Um, and then Libby asked quite specifically, if you're not in the office, how do you get trained? Yeah, I think it is definitely a little bit harder working from home. Um, but what can you do with COVID? Um, a lot of the coaching at the moment is done over Teams. So you might screen share if I've got a specific problem. I'll ring a senior, ring a manager and say, them, can you coach me through this thing? I've never looked at it before. And I'll screen share and they'll walk me through it just as they would if I was out on the client side or if I was in the office. So it definitely is more challenging working from home and trying to go through the apprenticeship program but again everyone's in that same position and um, even my seniors they're still learning new things so they know exactly what I'm going through and um, yeah it's one of those things and I'm sure we'll be back in the office soon enough fingers crossed <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, uh, to add Gemma, to what... just I was just going to ask the question Gemma if it impacts on recruitment as well oh brilliant oh and if somebody lives do they need to live near a place of work? So, so yeah. yes, so because we envision that we'll be back in the offices, hopefully soon, um, <laughs> we um, still would say to people apply for um, the region where you live. Um, so I, it's probably worth giving an example of um, after the first lockdown, I think, there's so many lockdowns now, um, after the first lockdown, when we were able to go back into the office, um, that was a really important moment for a lot of people where they were able to kind of touch base with um, their colleagues. And it meant that it was just much easier to get back into the flow of work, even though most people were not going into the office full time, being able to access the office and access their peers and access clients was really important. So that was Will remain regardless of um, whether we're in a pandemic or not um, being so applying to the office where you live is really important for your ability to connect with your teams and to effectively do your job essentially we had quite a lot of questions um, around the qualifications I'm going to allow people to watch the recording because I think you answered those quite comprehensively but one question that did come up quite a lot specifically was about work experience with BDO and I would expect because because we probably have quite a lot of school-aged mm. uh, people in here and teachers uh, mm. as well who may be interested. Yes so um, there was a slide where I talked about the work experience opportunities that we have available at BDO so for this particular year things that are open right now that um, students can apply for one 
um, our apprenticeship roles. If you go on our website, there are a ton of school leaver roles available at the moment across the different regions, across the streams that I've talked about already. So do take a look. To apply for one of our school leaver roles, you need to be in um, year 13 and be graduating this summer, finishing your A-levels or equivalent this summer, because what you would be doing is then starting that role in September of this year. So that's one. If you're looking for work experience or an insight, you know, this year we're talking about insight weeks because of that inability to kind of get access to the office and work on client work. There are two programs that I talked about. So there's, if you're in year 12, you can apply to our virtual insight program. And that's a week long where you get a range of skill sessions, workshops, you're given tasks and projects that you can work on that simulate the working life of our um, people at BDO. You learn about the different areas. Um, and that particular program, at the end of it, if you're successful, you can guarantee yourself a school leaver role for 2022. So for you to start that role in September, 2022. Aside from that program, we then have our social mobility program called Explore BDO. And that's specifically for students who are either in year 10, 11 or 12, who um, are attending a state school, have been eligible for free school meals, or would be the first in their family to go to university if they were to go. And the idea behind that program is very similar to the Virtual Insight Week. It's a week long. Um, it's the opportunity to find out about accounting, uh, find out about the different areas, what it's really like here from our people, about what their day to day looks like, so that you can make a form informed decision about if accounting's for you. If you are in year 11 when you do that program, and that program will be this summer um, in July, um, if you are in year 11, or if you're just finishing year 11, in July, um, you can take part in that program and then secure a place on our summer school for 2022. I'm just reeling off dates now. Um, <laughs> and if you are in year 12, when you complete that program, there is also the opportunity, if you're successful, to secure a school leaver role for 2022 as well. So it's very similar to the virtual insight week that I just talked about, but that's specifically for year 12s. And this one looks specifically at those that meet our social mobility requirements. But to be honest, the experience is the same and the opportunities that come off the back of those programs are the same as well. Great. Thank you very much. A nice, a nice, uh, well-rounded answer. Um, we have had a lot of questions. Uh, you've talked about um, when and what you can gain from it, but there seem to have been an awful lot of questions about requirements in terms, I think they're asking about grades. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, a lot saying, do you have to have an A-level? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, quite a few questions um, saying that, um, how competitive is it to get onto an apprenticeship program? Okay, so grades. Um, if you wanted to join um, our school leaver program, um, you would need between a nine and four in maths and English GCSE. Okay, then you would need three A levels or the equivalent um, with grades A star between A star and C in all three of those A levels. So when I say or an equivalent, if you've done a BTEC national diploma in business and have three distinctions or three merits, you could also apply to us. If you do your A-levels in any subjects, apart from general studies and another one that I've completely forgotten now, um, but in most subjects, um, it could be music, it could be, it could be anything. Um, if you have three A-levels, as long as all your A-levels, all three of them are either a C or above, you can apply to us. For the Explore BDO program, the Social Mobility Virtual Insight Week, we do not have our eligibility requirements because that program is fundamentally about giving people the opportunity to see what a, um, a career in accounting is like. So if you don't think you have those grades, but you meet the social mobility requirements around attending a state school, being eligible for free school meals, or being the first in your family to go to university, if you were to go, you can apply for that program. Right. I answered that. Yeah, no, I think oh, it's sorry. perfect. And I think yes. it's great that you've answered so so honestly because I think that is a really important bit of information for people to take away um, from today. Uh, 
We've, um, I think we probably have time for uh, one more, which I think is a really lovely question from Christine, um, who is 16 years old. And she uh, wants to know how she successfully can get to into a career for accounting. So this is quite nice, but, <clears throat> probably because it's someone who may not have made their, excuse me, subject choices yet or mm. thoughts about where they're going to go. Um, I'm going to answer. I don't know, Gemma, Gemma, if you've got anything as well. But from my point of view, I honestly think the most important thing is do subjects that you enjoy because you will do best in the subjects that you enjoy and you are much better off having A's in you know drama music and biology than trying to scrape C's in accounting because you think you need to have an accounting qualification um, all we care about is the grade do whatever A levels if you are doing A levels that you will enjoy and you know you're going to do well at so that's the kind of grade point the other thing as well is look out for programs like the Explore BDO program if you are eligible. Those really do help you get an insight into what the career actually is like. And what that allows you to do is find out if this career is for you. Oh, not sure. What's oh, we there. seem to lost her. <laughs> do you want to I carry on? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, so from kind of my point of view, when I was 16, the sort of things I was doing um, was, yeah, like we've just said, look for work experience programs. It can be BDO, it can be other firms. Just kind of find out what you actually really enjoy, what you like doing, because um, that can help you as well. Like you might not, you might do work experience in order and actually decide, oh, I didn't like going out to see different clients every week. I'd rather try a different area. Um, so definitely have a look, read about it. Um, some other things you can do. I don't know what um, different schools offer, but when I was at school, I did my Gold Dew for Edinburgh. So that was a really good thing to be able to kind of say at my interview, this is what I've done. And this is how the skills align to what you're looking for. Um, so any sort of extracurricular stuff, any sports activity, part-time jobs, um, just showing that you're more than your academics. Like we've said, your A-level results do matter. And ultimately that is what they're going to look for is kind of the first baseline. Um, but after that, there's so much more about you than just the results you're getting. And I think it's really important to be able to show that off in an interview in your assessment centre. Brilliant. I've, uh, there is one more question. Um, I, I knew that I thought so that might be the last one, but I thought this uh, this might be a nice one to finish up on as as well um, is, is that uh, once you've got the job and you've finished your apprenticeship, what support is offer on uh, does PDO offer? Because presumably they'll just drop you and say no. so farewell. <laughs> no, so um, I think it's important to note that the apprenticeship with us, whether you join as a graduate or you join after your um, A-levels, um, it's not a temporary role. The idea is that everybody goes through the apprenticeship and then continues with their career, hopefully with us. Um, the the way it works is once you're a qual um, qualified accountant, you've, you know, you've passed your exams, you then just continue to progress. So you have people that finish the, their apprenticeship and become assistant managers or audit seniors. They then become managers, they then become directors, and one day you can become a partner. So um, it's, it's not kind of a, you're with us for four years and then you have to go and find something else. The idea is that we're investing those four years in your development so that you can become an integral part of um, our team. So don't see it as kind of four years and I have to find another job. It is the job as long as you want. Um, and there is lots of support that we give kind of our qualified um, um, professionals as well. We have a whole team called our professional development team. And all they do is think about ways that they can make you like better and stronger. And, you know, oh, you want to learn about resilience? Yeah, of course, we're going to do that. Um, so there is a lot of support um, and a lot of teams that are focused on supporting you with your journey. Well, brilliant. It sounds like an excellent place to work and it was a really interesting, insightful session. Um, we are coming now to the actual end. I'd like to thank everybody for attending in our audience, which is really great. Uh, as I said, again, this session has been recorded. So if you feel like you've missed some of the details in the slides that might have more information, don't worry, we'll be popping it up on our website in a couple of days. So have a look for that. It's careermap.co.uk forward slash career map live. I'd like to say uh, a very big thank you 
to our two guests. And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to say any last questions from you two or comments before we go? Um, I'm just going to do a shameless plug. Please do check out our, um, our Early in Careers website. There are a ton of roles on there at the moment. We're also recruiting for the Virtual Insight program and the Explore BDO program that I talked about. And they are really great opportunities to learn more about the profession. If you are teachers or careers advisors, please do share them with your students as well. Just to add that really quickly, if you find the BDO Instagram, um, we're taking over it next week. All of us school leavers talk a bit more about the role and oh, even fun. more of your questions. So feel free to ask more questions on there. I'll be on there Tuesday morning if you've got any questions for me. Perfect. Do you want to pop that quickly into the chat box so people can click on it? Um, yes. Great. Well, it's been a really good session. Thank you, everybody. It's nice when everybody says a farewell. It's nice to see so many of you out there. And um, wherever you are, I hope, uh, you know, wish you all the very best in uh, where you're going. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.